Welcome back to the Florida Relocation Guide, your smartest way to move to and or buy a new construction home across the whole Sunshine State. My name is Adam Hancock. I'll be your host and today we're talking Sarasota, the best place to live for you and your family. However, this is not just a list of five random neighborhoods. This to me is five areas that I'm gonna use as a talking head of sorts to try to explain the entire picture with the goal being hopefully at the end of this video, you could grab one of these, you could grab two of these, ask better questions, narrow, research further, and get you to where you need to be, especially at this potential stage in the search. So we're going to hop in and by the way, if I can help you at all across the whole Florida real estate market picture, please do not hesitate to reach out. Let's get going. Okay, let's start things off with Lower Lakewood Ranch, Florida. And simply put, if you had just one place to educate yourself on this entire macro area, this is a fantastic way to start. One of the biggest and most popular master plan developments across the whole Sunshine State, really the United States as a whole, definitely the biggest and most popular across Sarasota and Manatee County districts themselves, and just value on top of value on top of value. 30 plus new construction communities, all built 1995 or after. Place is only halfway done. You have multiple downtown districts built just for this area, aquatic centers, state-of-the-art libraries, sports complexes, high-end public schools, and much, much more. So just a fantastic way to learn. At this point, you could be saying to yourself possibly, well, of course, Adam, if I go all the way to the boonies, I could get more space and newer housing and all these cool suburban district kind of things they can do with all of this land. Because my big sacrifice in all of that is I'm far from everything I wanna be close to. I'm not close to the beaches. I'm not close to the downtown. The whole reason Sarasota became popular in the first place. Well, this, my friends, is the exact reason I said lower Lakewood Ranch, not all of Lakewood Ranch. The reason I'm zooming in exactly on this one is that all those traditional knocks on the suburbs I just hinted at in the last few minutes, they can't build all this cool stuff I just mentioned right on top of the coast. There's just not space, it's too mature. But this is all perspective because while some parts of Lakewood Ranch, now this is how big this place is, 19 and a half miles one way from what I call this magical triangle, i.e. you go west, you get everything, the beaches, the downtown, what John Ringling really wanted in the first place of all this old school development. Another part called Waterside, which we're talking about here, which I consider the southeast lower part of Lakewood Ranch, is 9.6 miles in contrast. That is the difference between 18 to 22 minutes and 35 to 45. So if you think about it to yourself, if you get all of those suburban benefits, which there are benefits for sure, it's just this trade-off juxtaposition we're talking about here, that they can't mirror in the urban districts with a lot less of that locational sacrifice, isn't that almost the perfect happy medium? I think it's close. So with that being said, what exactly is this place? Now this particular video is not meant to be exactly about this, so I'm not gonna get crazy here, but let me give you the quick and dirty version so we both have a macro and a micro perspective. First up is the location that I keep harping on. You are in the very first part of Lakewood Ranch that's considered Sarasota County. The rest historically was all Manatee exclusively. So we're basically just talking south, closer. Your border road below you is Fruitville, to the north is University Parkway, and then it bleeds east to west. You go one way to Lorraine towards Bourneside, the other way uh, to Lakewood Ranch Boulevard towards 301 and the like. Basically, this is just a really interesting portal into what's magical about the essence of Sarasota, Florida's macro metro. Putting you 20-ish minutes one way to downtown Sarasota, which also puts you about four and a half miles to Lido Beach to your north. That's the portal into Longboat Key, Annabria Island, Coquina, Bradenton, all of that. You go the other direction, you're equally four and a half miles down to the world famous Siesta Key. You got shopping, dining, the quintessential Florida lifestyle, really everything that a lot of people dream and hope for. Okay, that all sounds potentially appealing. So what exactly are your options when it comes to living, buying, renting, etc.? Let me give you the summary, what's important, and then I'll physically give you a new construction builder roster that you can take and run with and do what you will research post this video. You're gonna find 10 to 11 plus different new construction neighborhoods right now, multiple phases of build process, maturity, and the like. The range of homes is also going to be vast. You got uh, rare walkability, New York style loft townhomes, custom homes that go one to six million. So the way I would categorize this is almost like a variety peacock. And all of this is basically anchored by this flagship amenity that is its own physical downtown. One of the biggest negatives to the suburbs that I keep talking about is that, you know, they have your prototypical shopping centers, you know, kind of boring with a Publix and a shipping store and these normal things. But you still yearn for cool restaurants and stuff that, you know, you really only get in non-chain urban districts. Well, Waterside Place could potentially be that solution to this kind of missing link. Lakefront setting, it's scenic, picturesque, it's tranquil. You have brunch, 
fancy dinners. There's casual, Florida's number one farmer's market overall, technically, which was previously held in the downtown Lake Ranch district a couple miles from here, has moved over to Waterside Place. Every Sunday, fresh produce, you have local goods, much, much more. It's fantastic. They even do open containers, so you know you can grab a drink from good liquid brewing. You can take the kids over to the little turf area, play cornhole and hang out, and it's just very safe you know, environment overall. That's the way I sum it up. I have two kids under eight, 25 foot wide sidewalks. It's central community gatherings. You know, you can go on and on and on live music, dedicated parks, splash pads, volleyball, just to name a few items. All right, now let's finish off section number one with a speed round of new home communities. I'm going to kick it off with one of the OGs, Shoreview, Pulte Homes, most importantly, fantastic piece of land, fantastic location, conservative amount of total volume of homes. I think they're still under 300 and just really close to Waterside Place. Not everyone is. Kingfisher Estates, opposite end of the spectrum. Bougie, less than 15 homes. It's John Cannon, 3 million and above, most likely um, in every scenario. Single family exclusive on huge bodies of water. Then you have Emerald Landing. And these, this is what I got to that cool style townhomes. They also have narrow, lean, tall, single families very different than anything you're gonna see. If you ever saw Payne Park, Sarasota, it's closer to that. Most likely five to 900K plus, but an interesting build in an interesting area as it orients. The Alcove Neil Signature Homes, 4650 total homes. Neil, uh, it's Neil Community's semi-custom brand. Unbelievable location as well. One of the closest within Waterside to town. Uh, Wild Blue is, I sum up, if you're familiar with the area at all, as Lake Club version number two. That's its closest resemblance and the closest thing you would get if you like the Lake Club. It is all custom builders, multiple options. It's got the old school players, Lee Weatherington, John Cannon, and Arthur Ruttenberg. Anchor, which I've not seen in the suburbs, they go west of the trail a lot. Um, the largest presence of stock luxury homes, wide lots, diverse amount of lots, and crazy, crazy amenities, Avanti. Affordable single family uh, homes and townhomes from Pulte, shares a lake with the alcove. Bungalow Walk, Dream Finders homes, five to 700K. Haven't seen them at all in this area in totality. Um, single family exclusive. Lake House Cove is another OG, one, a mix of one of the first couple neighborhoods that ever hit this district. Homes by town, master plan, custom builder, uh, shared, mostly homes by town. Nautique is MI Homes. Uh, it's more townhomes than single families. These are cool and maybe the most walkable of all the districts. They all say they're walkable, but is a mile walkable to you? I'm not sure, but a unique investment possibility as well. Shellstone is Lake House Cove by Homes by Town's second version. After they finish that one, they cross the Lorraine Road there. It shares a lake with Wild Blue Custom. It's going to have great and unique amenities. Um, and they've combined forces with Lee Weatherington as well to add some minutia beyond just homes by town. Uh, Customs to start probably more in addition to that. And I would assume this list overall, if you internalize half of what I said, would get you pretty dangerous. Number two on my list is what I'm calling Southern Venice slash Western Northport. And this is the perfect transition because if you checked out Lakewood Ranch, my number one, and you wanted to basically see what else is out there, this would be my next recommendation. These two kind of give you the bookends of the town itself. One is northeast of the stuff, one is very far south of the stuff, but they're very different from each other. In a lot of ways, this juxtaposition between the two covers many, many, if not the majority of bases. The primary reason that you would go in this direction versus the various other options at your disposal is a few fold in my mind. Heading about 25 minutes one way south of the Siesta Key area, just foundational spot on a map, we are below the Sarasota city limits, but we're still within the county itself. Generally going to be in this area, a little bit more laid back. It's going to be very, very coastal and almost peaceful. That's the way I would sum it up if you've especially already visited Lakewood Ranch. You're going to see, in addition to that, much more unison with the water and the land because of the lack of barrier islands, which is a very big divide from Sarasota. And historically, this was really kind of Sarasota Junior as a category. Maybe folks trying to get close to the coast, but save a little bit of money, get out of the thick of it where everybody else was going, which is that downtown area, and kind of migrating this way, even though it's changed a lot, especially in the last few years. But a big difference versus the fully suburban out option number one is this ha kind of has its own silo. It's not just Sarasota. In, a in addition to the master plan element that we're gonna talk about here in just a second, Venice has its own downtown. It's called Venice Island, historic downtown Venice. It's very quaint. It's charming. To me, it's kind of like Siesta Key Village had a baby with the commercial districts of Anna Maria Island and Bradenton Beach. You also have your own beaches, right? So like, this isn't like you get down to Venice, you have to shoot everywhere. You have Venice Beach, you have Casperson Beach. A lot of people consider the shark's tooth capital of the world. You have Brohard Beach, the only dog beach in the county. And then because this is the area that we're focusing on is so far south, 
You also have Manasota Key. So while you may be 35 minutes from all that kind of headquartered Sarasota town, which puts you in a similar conversation to most of Lakewood Ranch as well, which was the Knox, then you come home, you add your own version that a lot of people would deem important to have the both. So in the what exactly is this category, the real star of the show right now to me is one particular district and it's called Welland Park. This is another one of those most exciting and vogue master plan communities that the entire state as a whole has to offer at the moment. It is smaller than Lakewood Ranch by quite a bit, but it's relatively the size of the one particular district that we mentioned first, which was Waterside. That's how big Lakewood Ranch is. Waterside was just one element of it. You will find 14 to 15 plus-ish new construction neighborhoods, again, at various different stages of maturity levels, build timelines, all that kind of thing. Generally, in addition to that, with a really broad brush, a bit more affordable than a lot of the Sarasota proper counterparts, which is nice. And you recently have a downtown that just finished called Downtown Welland that offers a little bit more amenities when you leave your individual neighborhood. It's not just Downtown Venice. It's its own, it's just like Waterside Place. It has a marketplace, lakefront restaurants, a town hall, a great lawn, splash pad, 2.8 miles of trails around an 80 plus acre lake for walking, biking, and running. You know, this is kind of that movement of new urbanism where it's more convenient to hang out with your neighbors and walk and bike than it is to drive around and gives you more importantly, less reason to leave. There's tons of walkability, one of the most golf cart friendly areas the whole state has to offer in addition to the villages in central Florida. And it's also right next to a spring training baseball facility that beyond just baseball, gives you many, many live events and a year round open tiki bar. And lastly, just to add a little bit more takeaway research value once again, let's talk the builder roster for Welland Park. Granted, this place is an evolution. It was called the West Villages before, they added an additional district, they rebranded the whole thing, called it Welland Park. So it, it's not exactly on top of each other like it appears on the website. But all in all, really, really interesting. Antigua, Lennar community, super affordable, no frills. They are a spec builder for the most part. And this is right up that alley. Avelina is one of the first uh, communities to hit the Playmore district. This is the place that everyone thinks of when they call Welland Park as a whole. It is the walkable one. It's the sexy one. It's near the downtown and it's one of the newest overall. This is a Neil community. It, it was a low amount of homes, less than 100. And a lot of this stuff is similar to what people have come to know at Windward, at Grand Park, at Grand Palm. It's those kind of like sprawling three and a half, four bedroom models. Sunstone is a Mattamy Homes. This is kind of the second generation of Renaissance, which was another Mattamy community that's more mature. Villa, single families, 500K plus. Everly is one of the newest communities that is going on right now. It's one of the most exciting as well. It is early in on the first touches of luxury to this area. There has not historically been a ton of luxury building here. John Cannon, Lee Weatherington, Neil Signature, Homes by West Bay, which is making a big jump into Sarasota as well. High 600s and beyond. And Brightmore is the next. That's Mattamy, uh, is the first Mattamy 55 plus active adult living I have seen in this area. It's exciting because there's not just the affordability, but there's not a ton of active adult new construction here. You're not gonna see 15 Dell Webs when you drive by, so it is unique. Villas, single family homes, unbelievable amenities. There is water, the whole shebang. Boca Royale. This is in the conversation of old school. This is a question of, is this Welland or is it not? This is the branding play you're gonna see if you come to the area. It's in Englewood, it's not in Northport, it's not in Venice, so it's south of everything. It's a Neil community, uh, plus a little bit of an evolution there. It's got golf, importantly, it's 18 hole par 72. Uh, it's a real private kind of members only feel to it. To me, it's an old school kind of club. Um, so it's a stylistic thing. Wisteria is another Neil community, if I don't run out of words here. This is no frills. They sold most of them as spec. Um, uh, the, pretty much the majority of spec, I believe. Villa, single family homes. It's in that same Playmore district right down the street from Wisteria, which is the newer one. Uh, Lake Spur is one of the newest communities overall. It's mixed builder, Pulte Homes, Lennar, Mattamy, very family friendly, a lot more affordable. Interesting one overall. Well, we're almost there. Well, in Park Golf and Country Club, it's Lennar's newest golf com community. Lennar being a spec builder, they actually do quite lovely golf communities. They built Sarasota National, if you wanted to check that one out. They built Lakewood National. There's a bunch of them around. Lennar has built Grand Paradiso. Uh, there's Island Walk up there by it. And it's this kind of the eye of the beholder of what people consider well in park. Um, but interesting overall. Renaissance, which I mentioned before when I was talking about Mattamy on the other side of the West Villages district, you have Palmero which is one of the newest and is going to be one of the most in vogue overall, I think. This is David Weekly, Homes by Town. It's ICI, 
which I've not seen the area at all. Mattamy Homes, MI Homes, and Neal Community is all in here. It's a bunch of different options. From the look of the land, this looks like it's gonna be a thousand plus homes. So we're talking probably a five, six, seven year build out. And it gives people a way more feasible option to get in here because a lot of the other communities I mentioned are either really mature, or maybe just not quite right for you. And it feels like there's an abundance of options when you go to the website, but a lot of times when people search, it, it's not to their own criteria. Grand Place is a very niche boutique option. Sam Rogers Custom Homes, 42 of them. The owner walks every, every lot. So if you're looking for intimate, Grand Palm was a Neal community before Wisteria and Avelina to the area. This is also in the, across the street in the West Villages district. Interesting amenities, uh, multiple amenity centers. It's very nature centric, it's unique. They've been building 10 plus years. Last one, Solstice by Toll Brothers, not quite Monterey, not quite the Isles like Lakewood Ranch, but this gives you a more affordable version of Toll. Number three on the list, I am calling Central Sarasota. It is vague, but underratedly important. So you come to town, maybe we start you in Lakewood Ranch, just like this video. I'm using it as an example. I'm showing you the builders, the different opportunities and the like, the far, the near, all that stuff. And I'm like, you know what you also need to see after this day, tomorrow, let's go check out Venice because that's gonna give you the other side. And at the end of those two days, you're definitely leaning in a direction. A hundred percent of the time when I've done this and all of the hundreds of people that we've toured when they've come to town, one is for you and one is not. It's a binary polarity decision. And there's different reasons for that. Well, then you're like, what else is there? Well, this is the other right here that we're talking about. It is the middle. It's not as easy, but it's definitely another data point that is absolutely necessary. It's below Lakewood Ranch, it's above Venice, and it's central. You know, this is your parallel to Siesta Key, Florida area. It's not that far from anything, but it's definitely not as easy to get your head around as the areas that look more like Pleasantville when you visit town, especially if you're not super familiar with the area. So you could shoot north and you can enjoy the, all that number one downtown waterside place I mentioned has to offer. You could go even slightly below that and, and check out Fruitville Common. That's a lovely new district that is also in that direction. You could go south and enjoy Palmer Ranch, South Sarasota. You can enjoy Venice. You could go west to the main beaches and the downtown. In my experience, especially when it comes to relocation specifically, the heavy, heavy majority of people really choose one of these three options. Once you know these three, everything else is almost an offshoot, even if you don't choose them. With the other barrier islands, the urban districts being more of an anomaly in that conversation than not when it comes to a primary purchase. So then if you had the video's first three options on your short list per se, for example sake, why the heck would you pick number three, Central Sarasota versus the other two? And I think in my opinion, that simply comes down to an area that's uniquely in a state of transition and growth. You will find pockets of new development, but they will be nestled among established neighborhoods, creating quite an interesting mix of old and new Florida. So it depends on what you like. This blend can be particularly appealing, I think, for those who want new construction options, but also really do appreciate the character of more established areas. All right, now some research takeaways as far as the new construction neighborhood scene goes. The real main player in the game right now is a community called Sky Ranch. There's multiple tiers of value. It's mixed builder, kind of and just a lot going on in generally. This is heavily, heavily, majorly built by Taylor Morrison Homes. And then you got some sprinkles of John Cannon Custom, Arthur Ruttenberg. I've heard uh, rumblings of Home by West Bay coming in here and doing 90 foot lots to add some texture. Lennar's doing some cool stuff up front. And this will most likely continue as, I'm not even sure this place is halfway done. There's three primary sections to it. They're kind of like little villages. Casilla at Sky Ranch, a little bit more family friendly, a bunch of two story floor plans to accent that theme against the single family homes. There's a bit more space for your money, I guess, with a broad brush. You also have Esplanade at Sky Ranch. This is kind of the flagship brand of Taylor Morrison, especially when it comes to resort style amenities, historically with some of the most popular floor plans overall. The Palazzo, the Lazio, they pair it with some lack of better words, paired villa options as well. And then you got kind of a sidebar townhome community. It could be interesting on its own outright, but also for investment. And there's also some separation of amenities amongst these, which we could get into in a separate video. Um, but there's some exciting expansion coming with potential Bahama bars and uh, there's a public sports complex that rounds the whole community out called Turner that has, uh, you know, green space and open fields. This one kind of reminds me of Twin Lakes and Palmer Ranch. And it's just about its own fully master plan community on its own outright. Beyond that, sitting really close to this one is another community called Grand Park, and that's by Neal Communities. This is a great example of what can be gleaned based on what Neal has done in the past. They're the same builder that built Windward in Lower Lakewood Ranch, Indigo in Upper Lakewood Ranch, Canoe Creek in Parish, Grand Palm in Welland Park, amongst many others. Going north of all of this, there's also a community that I especially liked 
uh, a few years ago. I still like it now, but I especially liked it a few years ago called Artistry. This at one point was 100% Coulter Homes. Um, if you're not familiar with them, I view them as one of the higher end home builds you could possibly do without fully going custom, even semi-custom. There's unique floor plans, deep setbacks, four car garages, and just some things you don't find everywhere. Cardell Homes has since joined them at some point. So you have a little bit more variety. I think Cardell's kind of underrated too. People may disagree. Mm -hmm. Across the street from all of that, which is now completely finished selling, it's mature, is a community called Worthington, which is Cardell Homes and MI Homes, I believe, is the only two in there. So you could buy a resale home there that's potentially less than four or five years old if one of these other ones doesn't work, another option. Same going a little bit further south, there was a community called Waverly, which we did a couple of homes in by Medallion Homes, which is another really unique semi-custom guy. This was a really small neighborhood, but if you wanted a rather custom feeling neighborhood on top of that, it's pretty central to town as well. You could buy a resale in there uh, from someone else that kind of went ham on a build a few years ago. Maybe a good time uh, price-wise to do so. And that should give you a handful of options that could get you pretty dangerous from a research perspective. And lastly, one of the other things I did wanna mention that's very, very important, possibly the most exciting aspect that Central Sarasota has going on right now, in my personal opinion, is the potential future development. This is a foresight and appreciation looking into the future conversation. The area slightly east of I-75 here, often referred to as East County by some, me, whoever, is set up pretty nicely for significant growth if you look at what the other areas did. And a prime example of this is something called 3H Ranch. This is a ongoing project at the very, very, very early stages. Um, that's going to be a development that consists of more or less 6,500 homes, 250,000 square feet of commercial space, 120,000 square feet of office space, and more than 400 acres of green space across 14 plus interconnected neighborhoods. Now to put that in perspective real quick, cause that's a blur, I understand. That's basically the amount of village style neighborhoods that I talked about when describing Lower Lakewood Ranch's waterside and Welland Park. So you are basically plopping a full master plan community where there currently is not one, which is gonna take out a lot of the randomness and ambiguity of these four to five neighborhoods that I just mentioned. Importantly, making this feel much more inclusive, which almost negates a lot of the, the other negativity that I mentioned and hinted at earlier. 3H appears to be having a variety of home types, including single family homes, town homes, even multifamily complexes. So that's gonna be interesting for rent and for sale future school sites to add to the already pretty highly rated public school district. Right now, this sits with Lakeview Elementary of Sarasota Middle, Riverview High School. You could look up those in greater schools, really nicely rated, good mix. But you're also going to see additions to that, especially when it comes to K-8, maybe some private or public charters. ODA, Outdoor Academy, the private school that has some presence up in Lakewood, it has some presence down in Siesta Key just because of old land arrangements is expanding there as well. Amongst the current acreage, in addition to that, just to add you as much value as I can, um, already includes 450-ish acres of natural habitat, and they're supposed to preserve most, you know how builders are, they're gonna jam it in, but they're supposed to preserve most of this and then create more on top of it, as well by trying to have about 900 total acres when it's all said and done of open space. So with this progressive plan to build out from right now where I stand in, what are we in, August 2024, to 2040 and beyond, imagine coming to town in even five years from now and being able to choose between Waterside, Welland Park, and whatever this area is going to look like, not to mention like Western Bradenton Sea Flower, basically giving you, in my opinion, the ability to actually choose where you'd like to live and what you'd like to live in and not necessarily, which happens constantly now, people being pushed in a direction that's not ideal because of your housing criteria and your limited availability. Number four on my list is something that I call the magical triangle. And here we're going to get in a little bit of bonus territory. You know, we've covered our bases already with the first three. Now we're getting creative. And if you're targeting Southwest Florida, you've chosen Sarasota and you wanna live in it, you wanna experience it for the reasons of why it was first developed, why John Ringling liked it, then this is the bell of the ball. Because of the unique infrastructure of our lovely city here, this is a conversation to me of placement and access. Barrier Island, water, mainland, beaches, bay, bridges, and the rest of the land. The Magical Triangle, in essence, puts you as far west as possible on the mainland without physically falling off into the water. And this is the area, if you've ever heard the term west to trail, west to Tamiami Trail, this is the spot, which is especially important because in the right location, you're just two miles west of the main downtown Sarasota area, which also sits next to you on the mainland. So that's triangle point number one. In addition to that, you head towards number two, which is four and a half miles one way southeast of Lido Key, which is the first thing you really wanna know out in addition to downtown Sarasota, 
which also is the home of a cosmopolitan, really popular upscale shopping district called St. Armour Circle, and the portal into, like I mentioned earlier, Longboat Key, Anna Maria Island, etc. The other direction, you are about 4.5 miles northeast of the famous seven mile long barrier island of Siesta Key, which does have three beaches on it actually. So you have Crescent and Turtle in addition to the main Siesta Key. But the big key for no pun intended here is the north part of the island is where most of the action is. That's what most people think of when they refer to the whole barrier island, the whole seven to eight mile long island is the main Siesta Key Beach and Siesta Key Villages, that northern end. So this collectively basically creates our triangle, but this little spot on a map allows you to have, if you're in the middle of that triangle, allows you to have access to all of that because you sit in between the bridges. Because just being close to the water without being functionally close to how you would actually use that water isn't that helpful. So this gets you, in my personal opinion, close to relatively the perfect spot. And for me, variety and central proximity far outweigh the more deep commitment of actually being in the downtown or on the islands themselves. Because as amazing as they are, and they're lovely, don't get me wrong, once you're in it, you're in it. I'd rather personally be close to all of it. And the real crazy part about all of this is I'm not talking a bunch of condominiums. This isn't Brickle in Miami. It's not a high rise district on a small piece of land. These are large single family neighborhoods for the most part. A lot of times you're in non HOA districts highly rated public schools to boot. And, and that's just to say a few things. One of the most amazing options, not just in Southwest Florida area, and obviously I'm a little bit biased, but if you really pin this against the wall, but I think really in the United States as a whole. So I think I made my piece there about what this is. So beyond that, here's some research takeaways from a neighborhood perspective. Um, and this is gonna be a lot less of a new construction conversation than anything we've talked about in the past other than onesie, twosie kind of knock down urban infill builds. A great place to start here is a community, in my opinion, called McClellan Park. You research this, this puts you in that triangle I'm talking about. Various builders, some historical, some new construction. Price range, you know, realistically, you're talking, it's not cheap, you know, two million, you could get to six, seven million, you know, this is gonna be a wide, vast uh, array here. Historic homes, craftsman style, luxury, modern stuff, you know, it is gonna give you more texture than the platted out new construction. Plenty of lush landscaping, non-gated. These are some of the things you gain that you would lose with new construction because it's just so new. They have to create the idea. Another one is Cherokee Park. This might be my favorite neighborhood overall, like end all be all, if you made me choose just one. Just turning into this development, you have these wide streets, there's trees hanging over the streets. It just feels quaint. And there's various builders again, so it's kind of cool style, house to house many different architectural styles. That's what you're going to have here too that you won't get, like I said, in any of those master plan suburbs. Definitely a premium price point, right? Because if everyone's targeting one area, then you know, you're know you navigating the supply and demand conversation, but it's a mix of old and new residences. You got waterfront options because this is Bayfront before you get to the beach. Um, great proximity to another shopping district that I didn't even mention called Southside Village and beyond. And then you could throw in Harbor Acres in here too, Bayview, and depending on what you're working with, you could be close to the water, you could be on it, et cetera. A great way to really take all of this and give yourself that like crazy incremental value if you're an uh, analytical nerd like myself, is to learn by exploring the other dozens of neighborhoods that surround this cream of the crop section I'm talking about. Because even a community like Granada, that bleeds a little bit south, it's on that line of this Siesta Key kind of Osprey Avenue and beyond, you start to get in the eye of the beholder conversations. Because if you go slightly north, slightly south or east, and I'm talking slightly, like half a mile at a time, you start to lose some of that unanimous access to everything that I mentioned about being in the heart of the triangle in a small way, but potentially benefit when it comes to price. And the fifth and the final one on this list is Paris, Florida. And this is a great place to conclude because it represents an important concept in my real estate methodology, and that's the plan B. When the majority of people are trying to navigate the Southwest Florida area, in my experience, seeking potentially a relocation or to build a new, new home, et cetera, anywhere in that category, they start in the main areas, rightfully so. They're the most mature. They're the best way really to learn if you're looking at it correctly. Uh, typically the better locations from a proximity standpoint because they were built first, but then what happens what if the price doesn't quite work for your criteria? The timing of your move, whatever it may be. And the more it becomes that, almost like the everything but the beach concept, 
it's going to gain a lot more standalone value in my opinion. Well, the cool thing about this area, and I mean the whole thing, is that most of your primary destination spots that you're really dreaming after have alternatives that are really nice that could get you extremely close to the ideal with potentially a large fiscal benefit. And Parrish, Florida is simply a great talking head for this illustration. So I'm gonna take one step back. A large development effort hit Sarasota about 1995. Complete boom. In the next 20 years, you create all of Lakewood Ranch, well, at least half of it, as we know it today, a development that didn't, did not exist most of my life when growing up in Sarasota. So from a local's perspective, like someone like me growing up around the Siesta Key area, that was already really, really, really far from town. That was the boonies because there wasn't anything there before. It was uncharted. Well, if you go a little bit further than that, i.e. the central part of Lakewood Ranch being about 13 to 14 miles one way to downtown Sarasota, which I've been using as an example this whole time, the central part of Parrish, Florida, going in a similar direction, but being about 25 miles one way from downtown Sarasota, therein lies your plan B or your inherent sacrifice. So for example, say, humor me, say Lakewood Ranch doesn't work out. Zoom into Parrish. Maybe you go there, you get a pool when you couldn't have got one in Lakewood Ranch. Maybe you could get 400 square feet for the same price. And that's what I saw being the evolution of what, for lack of better words, put Parrish, Florida on the map. And really other than random examples of folks that were attracted to a more country environment, which was not the commonality in my personal experience, this was a move based on criteria. Many parts of Lakewood Ranch that are not waterside might be 10, 12 minutes closer than all the stuff you have available in Parrish to what people deem important. So people found themselves saying, well, you know, I might rather go a little bit further to get more house. Uh, maybe I could get a townhome in Lakewood Ranch or a similar area and I can get a single family out in Parrish and it was that important. So that's kind of what happened in my mind. It sounds simple, but that's what happened. That's not to say these areas are not something that you should look at as their own place to seek out individually to live, work, and play. It's just really important to me that you know the history of the evolution because they're not quite in a silo. You can lean into what other people deem a negative potentially and really gain a benefit if you look at it the right way. And this is the same conversation as you go about things that basically is what I'm trying to accomplish in this particular section. Once you're like, aha, I get it, now you can kind of understand all of Southwest Florida, including Tampa Bay and Naples area pretty quickly because you take a central Sarasota idea. Well, how do you get the parish version of that? You go a little bit further east, closer to Mayaka. You get into Venice, what's the parish version of that? Well, further south than Venice is Anglewood, further east than Venice is Northport. You could even go north of Sarasota's like coastal area and go to Western Brainton. And you're gonna continue to find examples of what I describe as a trade-off of a give and a take on a sacrifice with a potential fiscal benefit. So to finish off, I would look at that conversation that I just described and realize that it's not all give, it's also some take as well. In addition to the house criteria, Parrish, for example, sneaks you a little closer to the Tampa airport, TPA, and the Tampa stuff, so that could be attractive. It also hooks not just northeast, it also goes, it goes north and it starts to curve west. So similar distance to the Sarasota beaches as the Bradenton beaches, that's another one. Neighborhood-wise, a great way to compare, in my opinion, and one of the best ways overall, new construction exclusive, is to look at sister neighborhood concepts. A lot of what is in Lakewood Ranch, they duplicated in Paris, like directly duplicated. So if you look at the pricing and the orientation of fees and amenities, a lot of these builders, builders tell you exactly what they think of the value. Look at one builder that prices against itself in two different areas. That's a really cool way to see percentage gain or loss by going to one area versus another because of, it's the same business that's running that conversation. Examples of this, Canoe Creek and Parish. Compare that against Windward or Indigo and Lakewood Ranch with Neil, Neil Communities, the builder. The multiple Dell Webb 55 and up active adult living communities in Lakewood Ranch compare against the multiple Dell Webb communities in Parish, which is a brand of Pulte. Coulter Homes, another great example, also has a 55 and up effort out there called Woodland Preserve. Compare that against Crestwind, which sits right below it in Lakewood Ranch. And then some exciting stuff beyond that, North River Ranch in Parish, which is multiple builders, but it's headed up by Neal Communities. You start to hear the same names. That's why I know so much because, you know, it's the same 10 guys that do all of this stuff. You have David Weekly, the Pulte again, Homes by West Bay, Cardell, single family homes, townhomes, villas, multiple price points. And this area is inevitably, in my opinion, going to get into the, not only more resort style, but more master plan overall, so intentionality. In a sense, 
you ne you don't necessarily have to leave to get everything you want. All right, if you are still listening to this, we have made it, guys. And this is a wrap of today's video on the Florida Relocation Guide, your smartest way to move to and or purchase a new construction home across the Sunshine State. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you have not already done so. Would love for you to see all the video effort we're gonna put out for the balance of the year. We've got some good stuff coming. If you did resonate with the information in the slightest and you happen to be in the midst of a real estate decision, a relocation, even an interest level that's vague and broad, there are multiple ways to get involved with my organization. If you go to the sunshinestateco.com, we'll put this everywhere. First, we have free resources. These are stuff that you can just do at your leisure. I create Southwest Florida relocation guides, kind of flip book, really easy to consume. You can download it, print it, whatever you want. There's Friday newsletters that I try to put out on most Fridays. It's a bite-sized quick hitters. If you don't want to listen to 60 minutes, you can subscribe to that. I also put out many analytical tools, data-driven economics, driven tools that also are built for you to function on your own all throughout the year. It's all in one area, so that's nice. Another great thing to do is just simply reach out when you're in the midst of research and shortcut it by asking questions. We are in the thick, uh, especially me, all day long of this stuff. So you can reach out all different ways, all different contact, you know, all the different contact information we have here and ask questions you have that maybe kick the rock down the road and take a lot less time. And then lastly, the best way to probably kill 20 birds one stone, honestly, is to have a quick phone call, a non-obligation phone call. Hop on a call with someone from our team, say, my name is Blah, I'm trying to do this, I'm this far out, this is what I've looked at so far. Even Adam said this on a video that perked me up. And um, what that sounds like to us is it's a trigger, you know? What else should I look at? What can you send me? I'm coming to town in October. Can you guide us around when we get there? Anything in between. Beyond all of that, most importantly, I really do appreciate you guys taking any of your time to consume my very long-winded way of speaking. That is not lost on me. Um, that is it for this video and we'd we'll love to see you on the next one.